Tesla Cybertruck. We now know the battery chemistry and the size, but how is this possible? Because the battery just sounds too small for this vehicle to even work. It's massive. This vehicle is bigger than an F-150. How can it get the range that Tesla say it will with the 4680 type cells, well, kind of, that Tesla say it will be using? Well, here is what I think they're gonna do. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Tesla's master plan part three says that the Cybertruck will use a very small, compared to the Ford F-150, very, very small compared to the Ram Rev, which is their electric truck. By the way, it's not a hybrid. There will be a hybrid version, but I'm talking the fully electric version, which has a battery that's nearly three times the size. It's ridiculous. And the Silverado, which is GM's electric truck, right? How on earth are they going to make this thing have a good range with such a small battery? Well, there's two secrets that I think that we have been overlooking intentionally. It's sort of like a secret hiding in plain sight that Tesla has been saying, huh? yeah, this is here, but actually it's not here. I know it sounds ridiculous, but just hold with me for a moment. There's a lot of details in Tesla's master plan part three. If you wanna see those, I'll put a link in the description to my video about plan part three. It talks about the Cybertruck. It talks about production numbers for the Model 2. 4 million cars per year. It talks about battery chemistries. It talks about the bus, the new truck, the smaller truck. It talks about the semi numbers. It talks about so many different details. It's amazing, actually. So if you haven't already seen my video, have a look at that video. If you want to see the details on the Model 2, battery chemistry, battery pack sizes, well, I'll put a link in the description to that video as well. Now, also included in the plan, though, was the battery size of a Cybertruck. It's a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack using a nickel-based chemistry. Of course, it will be using 4680 batteries. But here's the thing. I figured Tesla would surely use lithium-ion phosphate cells because they don't have anywhere near enough 4680 batteries to put into Cybertrucks. So clearly, Tesla will have to use 2170s to begin with and also then ramp 4680 cells. Now, Tesla apparently have been struggling with the dry electrode coating process, maybe some other features behind this, but behind the energy density that they need, hit their goals and their targets with the chemistry. Now, I think there's a reason for this. They've been hiding something with the batteries. Now, a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack size has been used in the Model X, P100, and the P100D, but that battery size seems very small in comparison when you consider the size of this vehicle. Now, the tray size of the Cybertruck means it's got a significantly bigger tray than a Ford F-150. I think it's three inches longer. That's quite a big difference. And it's a much, much bigger and heavier vehicle than the Model X and the Model S. So how on earth will they get, say, the 300 miles of range minimum that the Cybertruck is expected to have with the same battery pack size? Now, considering Matthew Donegan Ryan said that Tesla would no longer be using a single motor variant. That means every variant that Tesla makes will have a minimum of two motors. Two motors, well, extra weight. You add an extra motor, you're adding extra weight to the vehicle. So there won't be any lightweight version of the Cybertruck. Let's have a look at the actual numbers here though. The Rivian R1T and Ford F-150 Lightning both have battery packs bigger than that, right? The large pack for the R1T is 135 kilowatt hours in size. And the Ford Lightning's pack is 131 kilowatt hours in size. But both those vehicles only have around about 300 miles of range. But their packs are 31 kilowatt hours and 35 kilowatt hours bigger than that being used in the Cybertruck. Can Tesla get that much more energy density out of their packs to be able to basically make up for that massive reduction in size. Well, when you think about it, Tesla Model Y, Tesla Model 3, what are the weights of those cars? For example, the Model Y weighs around about 1,800 kilos or around about 4,000 pounds, just under 4,000 pounds. However, if you compare similarly sized EVs from other companies, 
they all weigh around about 20% more, all of them, pretty much every single one. Now, if you include the fact that Tesla somehow is able to make cars that weigh less than other companies and still get the same range using smaller battery packs, it does seem feasible. But I also believe Tesla's got a couple of things up its sleeve. It actually bought a silicon company that makes silicon anodes for batteries back in 2020. It's said to have been working on getting the silicon anodes into its 4680 battery cell production. Now, if it does that, it would potentially increase the energy density by 10 to 20% of its current battery technology. And that's just a fact confirmed by several different battery experts and battery companies. For example, the new batteries that Mercedes will be using in 2024 and 2025 will have silicon anodes, which they say will increase the energy density by approximately 15% of their batteries. Therefore, if Tesla has been working on this technology since 2020 or even before then, it's possible that could go into 4680 or even into 2170 cell production. Now, if you combine this with the fact that I believe Tesla has been neutering the power of the Model Y that currently uses 4680 cells in order to make it uh, not kill other Model Ys. I mean, for example, if the Model Y coming from the factory in Texas using 4680 cells actually did have significantly more range than its competition, people would want the other versions of the Model Y. Now, if you consider the reality that Tesla is making very few Model Ys from the factory in Texas, it would significantly harm sales of Model Y vehicles that aren't made in the factory in Texas. Therefore, it's very possible that the 4680 cells actually have significantly more capacity or ability than what we believe that they do. I could be wrong on that though. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Either way, Tesla is also working with an expert currently on improving the dry electrode process. And that may also help with speeding production for the Cybertruck. If we combine the increased energy density that we may see from 4680 cells and structural packs with the fact that the Cybertruck could potentially be significantly lighter than its competition, thanks to the exoskeleton plus the structural battery packs, plus Tesla's ability to somehow get more energy efficiency out of their vehicles. Well, maybe it's true. Maybe Tesla can in fact get 300 miles of range from a battery pack of this size. It's yet to be seen, I don't know. But I hope they can pull it off. Because really, these sorts of big vehicles are a big drain on batteries. So if we have more efficient vehicles with smaller packs, that's a win for everyone. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And thank you for watching. Bye-bye.